In a field lies hope. Anticipation. From the biggest races to the brightest stages, taking you on the wildest ride. Forbidden trade, forbidden trade! With a gigantic upset, best in show, best in show! For the glory, the pride, the payoff. Enter the field, the Ontario Sire Stakes Program, from Ontario Farms to the world stage. Winback Farm of Delaware is proud to present three new stallions for 2022. Oshawa three-year-old Colt Pacer of the Year, he's watching with over $1 billion in career earnings. Multiple stakes winner's sports column with a sizzling 149 at one mark. And Yonkers trot winner Top Flight Angel with nearly $1 million in career earnings. Also, Heston Blue Chip, a proven sire of stakes winners, will now stand at Diamond Creek Farm of Pennsylvania with earnings over $1.7 million. For more information, visit winbackfarm.com. Dave Maneri joins us now on twos and training for the harness racing update. And Dave, how is your, you know, your winter going here? You've got 20 horses, 11 babies. How's everything progressing so far? Uh, it's kind of been a rough winter, you know, but when you're in Canada, it's the same for everybody. You know, it was a rough winter, a rough spring. Um, you know, I'd probably say the worst in the last 12 or 15 years, but we got through it and hopefully the end's in sight. You're right, actually. I can't remember the last time we had this much snow all winter. I just snow and up and down and up and down. And, you know, the weather is never consistent. You know, we had a couple of real, real cold uh, days or weeks. But, uh, you know, we, we made it through. And, and uh, you know, overall, the horses were, were super healthy all winter. Um, so I think it bothered us more than it bothered them. Speaking of your horses, you have a few kind of top names coming back this season. Let's start with, you know, the older one in the barn, Sintra, nine years old now. How is he doing? Uh, he's uh, he's the king of comebacks, you know, hopefully he has one more in him. Um, you know, he's nine years old and uh, hopefully qualify him next week, maybe the week after. You know, whenever he says he's ready, you know, he's real close. But, you know, he's got to start, start at the top level and, and, and uh, you know, racing at that kind of level, you got to be in shape. So, uh, you know, he's always good off the shelf and you know, hopefully he is again. And your two four-year-old mares you hear, you have here is Bet on Becky and Da Barn Dogs watching. Can you tell us about those two? Uh, Bet on Becky, there's a lot of highs and lows and uh, actually uh, at the end of the year, uh, cut a deal with uh, Steve Stewart from Hunterton. So uh, she's enjoying her life as a brood mare now. And uh, I believe they're gonna breed her to Captain Treacherous. Um, you know, so she kind of had a lot of highs and lows, but ended the year on a good note and, and she's going to a good home. And uh, the barn dog's watching. Um, she trained back uh, with the owners, uh, Ted McDonald and Julie Ferguson and uh, Rito Carlton all winter. Uh, Ted qualified her last week and they sent her back up and uh, she's in to go uh, tomorrow night. And, you know, she might need a start, but uh, they did a really good job with her all winter and she's a big mare that filled out. So, uh, you know, hopefully she can have a good four year old cam campaign. I was just going to ask, you know, do you notice a big difference between three and four year olds with the mares? Uh, it's going to be tough for, her. you know, like she, she's in a few stakes uh, up here, you know, if she can step up her game. Um, you know, last year, some of her best performances, you know, were, were top notch. But, uh, you know, racing older mares, you got to show up every week and do it. So, you know, hopefully she can get off to a good start. And, you know, she's kind of mare that can race anyway. You know, she's, uh, she's a lot better uh, off a helmet. You know, so hopefully, uh, you know, she's fast enough and mature enough and she can handle the jump. Now let's review some of the two-year-olds. You know, there's a few first crops that you have this year. And when you're looking at first crops, the ones that we're gonna review is All Bets Off and Lazarus. What kind of traits are you looking for in those sires when it could be kind of a gamble to take one? Well, they're both sons of Better's Delight. And you know, I've had a lot of good and a lot of bad Better's Delights. Um, you know, so first crop, you're taking a gamble, um, you know, but 
so is everybody else. You know, you just got to try to find the right individual or the kind of pedigree that you want from the farm that you want and, uh, you know, go from there and take a chance. Now your physical appearance for the two-year-olds, whether it's in the ring or on the videos, is there anything specific that you're looking for? I always say I like to, I want to see the twinkle in their eye, you know, a little bit the whole package and, you know, some, somewhere along the line you got to give up something, you know, uh, you know, it was harder to buy yearlings this year, I think, than any other year, you know, inflation, everything, doesn't matter if it's lumber or, or uh, gas, you know, everything's gone up. Uh, you know, so if you want to have the best looking horse with the best pedigree and the best confirmation, you really got to pay for it. So, you know, you got to sacrifice something if, uh, if you're looking for a bargain along the way, but you're hopefully you're not sacrificing too much. You can find that one that slides through the crack. You know, I just, I like a good solid horse, you know, a horse that's going to grow up. You know, I try to look, look at where they're going to grow up, you know, not exactly how they go in the ring. Um, when horses go in the ring, it's like a bride on her wedding day, you know, she's never going to look better. Um, you know, but sometimes I try to see them in the future and, you know, have a horse that's, you know, strong enough to, you know, take some heavy training and heavy racing. And you always kind of go for different jurisdictions as well, but you always continue to keep close to home with the Ontario Sired as well. What keeps you coming back to the Ontario Sired program? Well, it's just so close to home, you know, and, and the stake payments are so reasonable. Um, you know, if you can have a high-end grass root horse, you know, with, with some pedigree, um, you know, there's a, so many grand circuit stakes at Woodbine, you know, it gives you the opportunity that you never have to leave home and, you know, even uh, the, we're lucky with the Woodbine stakes, um, you know, they're all reasonably priced, uh, you know, it doesn't get too far out of whack. Let's get right into some of your two-year-olds here. The first one we're going to talk about is Joker on Jack, a Better's Delight gelding, 67,000 at Harrisburg. Yeah, it was it was tough to buy horses, so you know I seen a lot of horses you know go by that I liked. Um, I, I really did like this colt. Uh, he was consigned by Northwood, and uh, the first two foals out of the mare were fillies that didn't really hit. And this is the first colt that she'd had. Um, the dam is just a sort of betting line, um, and you know this colt he was a little bit tough to break, but uh, you know once we, we got him rolling and uh, got him gelded, uh, he's just been an absolute you know good gated race car. Next up is Best Bet Duo, another gelding, Better's Delight, Lexington, 55000 for this one. Uh, this is a colt that uh, George Sharp sent up uh, around New Year's. Um, he came up you know, as a fresh gelding in three minutes, and uh, I'm really happy to have him in the barn. George is a big thoroughbred owner, and hopefully we convert him to standard breads, but uh, it's a good gated colt, um, and he goes really fast, really easy. Um, you know, sometimes he's a little bit better freewheeling than he is sitting in a hole. You know, but uh, we'll just keep him settled and, you know, I'm really happy that he, go, he goes so fast, so easy. And your all bets off colt, Rock a Honey, Harrisburg, $40,000. This is one of your first crops here. Yeah, this is a really strong colt. Um, we picked him up at Harrisburg, uh, a few of my partners and Ron Burke partners, um, you know, all went on this colt together. It was uh, one of Ronnie's favorite all bets off and mine too. So instead of button heads, we partnered up. Uh, this colt, you know, we gelded him too. Uh, he's probably got about the best gait of everybody in the barn, and uh, he's got a really big quarter in him, but he's kind of cold that, you know, fall along in the best set, or fall along in any set, but he maybe does want to even cut a slower set. You know, I think the more work we put into him, the better he's getting, and, uh, you know, we start to go two trips and get the race bikes, and he gets, you know, woke up a little bit. I, I think he's a decent horse. Now, when you're gelding them, do you make that decision fairly quickly, or do you try and kind of wait it and see how they are if they calm down a bit? Uh, I've always been, it depends what you're buying, you know, I've always been really pro gelding. Um, you know, it's different if you're buying, uh, you know, $200,000 yearlings or, you know, high in pedigree. But if you're dealing with Ontario sired, you know, yearlings are worth forty or 60000 it's a flooded market and your chances aren't very good. Um, you know, I, I was right on everybody this year, uh, you know, because I, I dragged my feet on a couple that should have been gelded last year and I regretted not doing it sooner, so uh, I didn't fool around this year. And after they're gelded, is there, you know, a specific time frame before you start back with them or depends on each one? Uh, nowadays, uh, John Hennessy did most of the gelding this year. Um, you know, my whole life, uh, Hugh Llewellyn was always there for me. Uh, these guys do such a good job, you know, that, uh, you know, they're, they're jogging two days later and, uh, you know, probably training back 10 days later. Uh, you know, we're lucky everybody's gone pretty smooth, you know, over the last, last couple of years and we've had no, no problems. Now your next one we're going to talk about is the filly, a he's watching filly, Harrisburg $55,000. And what have you seen from her that maybe you saw in her father? 
This filly really looks like a colt. You know, she's not the biggest, but she looks a lot more like a colt than a filly. You know, we didn't catch her on tape today. She's sort of, there's a lot of nice colts, but it's definitely the best filly. Um, you know, I'd say she ranks up there in the top fillies that I've trained down. Um, you know, very willing and strong and wants to do it, but she tied up a couple days ago. So we'll just get that ironed out and, and uh, let her get back to normal and, and keep rolling with her. Now, when you look at, you know, the offspring of He's Watching, that was a $3,000 horse. What it, does it kind of make you feel nostalgic at all seeing or purchasing them for tens of thousand dollars? Yeah, well, the game's changed now. The guys with the beards and straw hats can't even get them for three thousand dollars. But that was a fairy book uh, story, you know. Give everybody right across I ninety hope. Um, you know, it changed my life. Um, you know, he's a great horse, and I can't wait to have the next great horse. But uh, you know, the foals. Uh, you know, I his very first crop. People worried about him being small. They're they're there's a lot more big ones than there is small ones and uh, it's like any sire you're, you're gonna have good ones you're gonna have bad ones and, and I, I've had some of both. Uh, how about your next one here at Nazar a colt by Sweet Lou 105,000 PA sired for this one at Harrisburg. Uh, this is the last man standing so this is the only colt that I haven't gelded this year and just a real gentleman um, you know for a Sweet Lou like uh, a real big colt and we haven't rushed him along he's done it real easy now he, uh, he was a little tough to break and he showed absolutely no pace at all free-legged. Um, first day we threw the hobbles on him, he never missed a beat, you know, just like a four-year-old right away and uh, he's been good all winter and every time we call on him he's there, um, you know, and uh, you know, for a big horse he seems very mature. Do you try and start free-legged with all of them and then use the hobbles as kind of like guide wires when they need them or do you put them on right away with some? Uh, we'll, we'll get them broke and get their mouth good, you know, one or two days, and we'll, we'll get the hobbles on them right away. You know, as soon as we know that, uh, you know, they're safe and their mouth's good, get the hobbles on them right away. And, you know, as long as the track allows, I wear hobbles on them every day, all winter. You know, once we start to go two trips, we'll take the hobbles off. A lot of the overchucks will come off, and, and uh, they're getting closer to being racehorses. And how about Twin B Sea Monster down by the seaside, gelding for 65000 at Harrisburg? This, uh, this is the first down by the seaside that I've had, and uh, uh, if you're going to race them all today, this colt would probably win. You know, he's just so athletic. I've, I've never seen him tired. Um, you know, his confirmation wasn't the best, but uh, my blacksmith, Gaetani Bear, he said, uh, you know, don't worry about it. And uh, so far, he's been right. Um, you know, this colt, uh, he's not hot, but he's always, you know, on. You know, he's just very willing and never tired. Um, you know, and I don't always go with him a lot. You know, he's, he's just so push button. You know, he cuts a lot of miles and you do anything you want with him. But, uh, you know, he might be more of a big track horse, but we'll see when he gets closer. Now, we all know the story of Lazarus, and, and uh, you have first crop here, this gelding, all about time, 19,000 at Harrisburg. This is a colt that uh, some owners from England picked out, and he's the cheapest colt in Shudderow, but uh, like you talked about, uh, prices, once, you get, once they get home, you treat them all the same. He, uh, he is a small colt, um, but he might have the best attitude of everybody in the barn, you know, very willing, and, and for a little horse, he's got a very big gait, you know, so I don't think it's Grand Circuit horse, but, uh, you know, maybe he can dabble in New Jersey over Freehold, you know, Freehold might suit him, or, you know, just hopefully turn into a nice racehorse. And our last one on the list here is Compass Rose DeVee, your filly from Kentucky for 20000 Um, You know, for $20,000, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice filly, very, very big filly. You know, has, has a good gait on her, and for, you know, she has a fair bit of pedigree being a Mickey, first of all, out of a Sun Beach mare. Um, she's a little bit back in her knees. Um, she seems to be growing out of that. She's done a lot of growing. She got a little bit set back early. Um, this filly got kicked in the paddock by another filly and had to go to Milton Ecoin for surgery. And, uh, you know, it healed up real quick, and I didn't think it set her back, you know, too much at the time. But once we started training, you could tell that she was three or four weeks behind everybody else, and, and she's come to the point now where she's caught up. That's great to hear that she caught up and sometimes, you know, they're whether they get kicked or not or hurt or not, they're just not quite ready with everyone else. I were really lucky as far as vetting all the yearlings out this year. There, there wasn't one that needed surgery or any chips removed, but uh, that filly uh, and another three-year-old filly five days apart got kicked in the exact same spot, spot by different horses in different fields and uh, that was our two surgeries for the year. Both fillies healed up and you know, it was just a fluke thing. It happens as per training horses, right? Yeah, you know, you, you can't you can't bubble wrap them, and you know we we get them outside and you know try to pair them up and keep them all happy, and you know everybody's got their own routine. Well, thanks for joining us here, and good luck this season with your comebacks and 
your future stars. Super, thank you very much. In a field lies hope, anticipation, from the biggest races to the brightest stages, taking you on the wildest ride. Forbidden trade, forbidden trade, with a gigantic upset, best in show, best in show. For the glory, the pride, the payoff, enter the field, the Ontario Sire Stakes program, from Ontario Farms to the world stage. Winback Farm of Delaware is proud to present three new stallions for 2022. Ushua three-year-old Colt Pacer of the Year, he's watching with over $1 billion in career earnings. Multiple stakes winner's sports column with a sizzling 149 at one mark. And Yonkers trot winner top flight Angel with nearly $1 million in career earnings. Also, Heston Blue Chip, a proven sire of stakes winners, will now stand at Diamond Creek Farm of Pennsylvania with earnings over $1.7 million. For more information, visit winbackfarm.com.